Miss Greenwood and today we are going to do our oil pastel demo. For this demo you will need some supplies including your oil pastels. I'm going to put a chart up on the screen really quick because you'll want to choose three analogous colors. That means three colors that land next to each other on the color wheel. You'll also want white and black for blending. You'll need a pencil and you'll need paper. If you have a multimedia paper or something with some tooth to it where it has a bumpy surface, that would be ideal, but lined paper or computer paper is also just fine. Let's get started by drawing two rectangles at the top of our paper. Leave a little bit of space on the top so we can label these later. You're going to draw six more rectangles. Draw two rows of three. And your paper should look something like this when you're done. The first rectangle of this row we're going to split in half with a horizontal line. And then go ahead and choose your oil pastels. You will need a white, black, and three analogous colors. Here's your color wheel in case you need a reminder of what those analogous colors are. They are three colors next to each other on the color wheel. So mine are yellow, yellow green, and green. And feel free to take a moment and clean up your oil pastels if you need to. You can pull back some of the paper and wipe any color clear that might be stuck on the end from previous use. Let's label our boxes. So in the first box, we will label it blend with white. And the second box on the top will be blend with black. And feel free to pause the video if you need to while you label your rectangles. The next one will be light pressure on the top and on the bottom will be heavy pressure. Next is the rule of three. The next rectangle is finger blend. You could also use a napkin wrapped around your finger if you want to, or like a paper towel. The next box is stippling. Scrumbling will be your next one. And we'll talk about what that looks like. And then your last one is Scraffito. It's spelt a little funny, so check your screen for spelling if you need to. I think I spelt it wrong on my paper, <laughs> but oh well. All right, let's dive right in. So we're going to start with the pressure boxes. I'm using my middle color, my yellow green, but you could use any color you want to of your analogous. I'm going to start on the left hand side and using the lightest pressure I can while still depositing color on my paper. I'm going to apply oil pastel to this box. In this exercise, we'll be working from left to right most of the time. So oil pastel works the best when it is layered. I'm going to put a minimum of three layers on this box. And I'll zoom in a little bit here. So I start from the left with each layer and I'm overlapping a little bit each time so that I get a gradient or a value scale. The next is heavy pressure. So this will be almost as hard as you can press without destroying your oil pastel. Notice you're getting little flakes of color coming up. Your oil pastel crayon is starting to break apart a little bit. I'm still blending a minimum of three layers, but it's becoming more difficult to do because as you can see on the end of my crayon, my oil pastel crayon, little flecks of oil pastel are coming up off the paper. And this is where you really need to find a, media, a middle ground between light and heavy pressure when working with oil pastel. If you press too hard, it just creates these crumbs and it pulls everything up. We're going to move on to the rule of three and you'll need all three of your oil pastels. I'm gonna start with my middle color. So for me, that is my green yellow. And again, I'm starting on the left hand side I am only going to fill in two thirds of this box with a medium pressure. Now I'm going to choose my lightest color, which would be my yellow, and I'm going to fill in the right side of this box. And I am going to let them overlap a little bit. Now my darker color, so this is my straight green, I'm applying to the left hand side again with medium pressure. 
I'm going to go about a third of the way through this box. And that is my first layer. So I'm going to repeat this process with my lightest color on the right, letting it overlap a little farther this time. My middle color, so my green yellow, and again, I'm letting it overlap a little bit. And pay special attention to the seams. So where you have two colors meeting, I would spend a little more time and care really getting that blending motion in. We'll talk about scrambling in a moment, but moving in a circular motion acts like you're stirring a pot of liquid. You're pushing the color to the left while pulling the color into the right. And as you get to your last layer, you should notice that the seams are becoming impossible to distinguish where one color begins and another color ends. And that is the goal of this rule of three blending technique. You're getting a gradient with a really smooth transition. Now let's move on to our finger blending. So for this, you can use your finger or you can wrap a paper towel or a napkin around your finger. We are going to use our darkest color on the left hand side. And I'm going about halfway here. I'm going to apply about two or three layers at once with medium pressure. And then on the right, I'm going to use my lightest color I'm not going to let these two colors touch because I want to do that blending with my finger. Make sure you have enough oil pastel on your paper that you can actually use your finger to blend. I'm going to press down and pull one color into the other. You'll notice if you start blending by heavy pressure with your finger, you'll get a lot of oil pastel coming up onto your hand. You'll even see these waves of color, these little petals that form. And if you go back and forth, or if you're blending too hard, you'll get these waves inside of your color where the oil pastel is balling up. We don't want that to happen. So you really need to practice the pressure that you use. And you can see that banding happening there. Let's move on to stippling. And stippling is just like it sounds. It's little tiny dots like you would do with a pen when we do stippling and rendering techniques. So I'm going to start with my darker color on the left hand side, and I'm going to just do a bunch of dots. This is gonna take you a minute. Try to make them actual dots, not like long tails. Um, this will just come with practice, but you're gonna do a pretty thick layer of these dots. You don't wanna see a lot of paper underneath. On the right hand side, I'm gonna do the lighter color. And each time I add another layer, I'm going to let these dots overlap a little bit more. With stippling, you may need to do more than three layers to really get a seamless blend on the color transition. In our scrumbling box, we are going to move in circles. I usually go counterclockwise. And again, I'm starting with my darker color on the left hand side. When you're scrumbling, you usually start with a loose scrumble, meaning your circles are pretty big and you can see quite a bit of paper underneath. I'm applying my lighter color to the right hand side, again in that counterclockwise scrumbling motion. And you can see when the colors overlap, doing that circular motion is a really efficient way to blend your colors because you are pushing one color into the other while pulling the other color into the previous color. So this scrumbling technique is something you'll use almost all the time when applying oil pastel down, unless you're going for a very specific texture. But if you're getting your base layers down just to get the color that you want on your paper, I would recommend doing the scrumbling method and the rule of three combined. This is where we can see that incorrect pressure can have a negative impact on your oil pastel adhering to your other layers. If you press too hard, you're going to actually pull up large amounts of your oil pastel when you're trying to blend them. So you'll need to practice getting that correct medium pressure down, especially as you get farther in the layering process. If you notice your oil pastel is peeling up or just not sticking anymore, oftentimes it will scrape off other layers, then you're probably pressing too hard and you need to go as light as you can. So 
it's a it's a fine line. It's going to take practice, but we usually start with medium to heavy pressure, and as you build your layers, you get lighter pressure and lighter pressure as you go. Let's move on to our Scrafito box. Now this is a unique one. We're going to split this in half basically where the left hand side I am applying medium to heavy pressure of my dark color first. And again you do not want these two colors to blend yet. Before applying your light colors it's always a good idea to check the end just to make sure there's no previous color on there. So I'm going to fill in the right section and again I'm not letting these touch but I am using pretty heavy pressure here and I'm layering it up. So if you see, I did a few layers. So now I'm going to layer these with the opposite color. I'm gonna put yellow on the left side. On the right side, we're gonna add a layer of the dark green. And you wanna do this until you really can't see much of that underneath color. All right, I've got some pretty thick layers of oil pastel there. Now I need to find something sharp like a paper clip. And I'm using a piece from my block cutting set and what we're going to do is scratch marks into the surface. On the left hand side, remember our yellow is on top. So we are scratching away the yellow oil pastel to show the darker color underneath. It's not a very dramatic effect when your dark color is underneath and your light color is on the top. But when we go over to the right, you can see this effect is quite more dramatic. So I have a lot more contrast between the light color underneath and the dark green I'm scraping off the top. Let's grab our white oil pastel and our darker color. We're gonna go up to the blend with white box and I'm going to fill in the left-hand side of this box about two thirds of the way with medium pressure using my scrambling technique. And now with the white oil pastel, we're going to fill in the right third and let those colors overlap. Remember to use medium or light pressure when you get to the point where you're overlapping onto another color. This might be a good time to really stop and look at how different your blended color looks from your darker color that has no additional color on top. So it's an interesting thing with oil pastels. The more colors you mix together, the smoother the layer looks. I could add up a ton of layers of that dark green and it would still look a little crumbly and you might even see some white paper beneath it. The minute I add a second color to that, it really smooths out. And that's why we usually recommend that rule of three because it really gives you that almost like you're looking underwater smooth blend. All right, there's a reason why we saved the blend with black for last. I'm going to fill in the right hand two thirds with my darker green color, and I'm scrambling again using about medium pressure. I'm gonna layer this up um, about two to three layers so we have a pretty thick coating of oil pastel here. Now black oil pastel is so condensed with pigment that if you were to make a mistake with this, it's very difficult to cover up. It also smears really bad. So I always recommend using black last if you can. It doesn't work for all projects, but I would really encourage you to try to find a way to make black oil pastel be the last thing you're applying to your paper unless you are using it to blend. So I am filling in the left-hand side and I'm going to let these overlap a little bit. And you'll notice the minute it touches that darker color of yours, it starts blending um, pretty smoothly, but it's very difficult to see the color underneath. So you will need to do quite a bit of blending on that transition edge with your other color. And those are your oil pastel techniques. So hopefully you have some blending options and some techniques available to you for texture. I would use the bottom section of your paper or any extra space you have to practice these a little bit further or even come up with your own. Otherwise, let me know if you have questions and I hope this was helpful.